Well, good to be back with you again for a five-minute devotion. I'm titling this today, The Most Honest Thing in Life. You know, a recent survey tells us that 81% of Americans believe in God. And the same survey tells us that less than 47% of those who believe in God join together with other believers each week. You know, I remember as a young child that my dad would promise to do something with me. But when it came time to actually fulfill that promise, he had some good reasons, some good excuses why he couldn't do it, and then would make yet another promise that the next time he would for sure do it. I remember years ago in my alcoholic days during doing the same thing with my own children. I would promise to take them somewhere do something with them, but when it came to the time to fulfill what I said, I would much rather drink with my buddies or do something else fun and then make yet another promise for the next time. You know, over the years in ministry, uh, I have heard so many unfulfilled good intentions from people, people who wanted me to pick them up for church, I would show up, they're still in bed, they're not there. Or they'll tell me, I want to be at church, I consider embassy my family, you're like a father to me, and they promised to see me next Sunday, but then, yes, never showed up. You know, it seems that we humans are very good at talking about our beliefs, our intentions, even promises. But when it comes to living them, we many times fail miserably. So it seems that the most honest thing in life is our actions. Actions, as the old saying go, truly speak louder than words. You know, Jesus even had something to say about this. He goes, these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. I honestly believe that's why Jesus stated that we all will give an account on the day of judgment for every idle word we speak, every useless word, every promise we didn't keep, every good intention that we failed to fulfill, all the words that gave hope and encouragement and promise for others dashed to pieces as we didn't keep our word. And it seems that the connection between our words and our actions are so important to God that he even states in the book of Revelations that on that great day of judgment, all liars will experience the second death and be separated from the life of God. Yes, our actions determine what we really believe and reveals the honest truth in the end. Now listen, there's no doubt this is why Jesus said the two greatest commandments is this, to love God with all your heart, your thoughts, your soul, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Notice all these are action and not words. So in closing, I'm really glad <laughs> that God didn't say one thing and do another, aren't you? You know, we read in the Paul's letter to the Ephesians that while we were dead in our sins, God sent his son and showed us kindness. He gave us a gift, Jesus Christ, whom we can honestly come to believe in him regardless of what we've done. We can be recipients of, of God's grace so that we get the privilege of placing real sincere belief in the risen Jesus who is alive forevermore and with the help of our God really start living in newness of life, not just talking about it. Did you know that those who really believe in Jesus as the rule of their life, that they're counted as the children of God, 
that they are God's workmanship. He is the one that is changing you, creating you in Jesus for what? For good works, action. In other words, God doesn't make you his own just so you can live your best life now the way you want it. But he has prepared, it says in Ephesians, in advance a specific work for each of us. And that is why his will is for you to join yourself with his family, his church, and start fulfilling the calling that is on your life and growing in your belief, in your faith, and being an honest, true witness of God to a world that so desperately needs to know God for all it's worth. And this all will happen through your actions, my actions, as children of God. It's something to think about, dear friends. Until next time, may God richly bless you.